You ever have the kind of day where like you're going around, everything's just fine. You're going about your business, everything's normal. And like for me, I record an entire episode, everything's good. And then I go to edit it and then you realize that a single skin cell must have bumped a mute button somewhere. Yeah, me neither. Welcome back to another episode, times two today, of Lombardi Time Brews. And you know, it is a Monday, Mock Draft Mondays are a thing, and it's been a little while since I did Mock Draft Roundup. I put out a couple of my own Mock Drafts and haven't checked in on what others are doing. So today I decided that we're going to go through, I've got 12 different Mock Drafts we're going to go through. I'm going to tell you who these Mock Drafts picked. I did all the legwork for you, so you don't have to go look these things up. And then I'm also going to put in a couple notes here or there of like what I think of each one, just so you have an idea. One quick programming note before we totally get going into the content of today. Uh, coming up this week, I do have a number of doctor's appointments, different meetings throughout the middle of this week. So I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to put out a Wednesday episode. Normally, as you know, I do episodes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then during the season, it's a bunch more. Well... This week, I may not be able to get to that Wednesday episode, but for sure, I will be back on Friday. Uh, I may also do something middle of the week. If the Rodgers trade goes through, I might find some time to at least hop on and talk about it. So at the very least, uh, maybe I'll be on a Wednesday, maybe not. may have to wait until Friday for the next episode of Lombardi Time Brews. So thanks for being here today. Let's dive into the mock draft content. Um, You know what I will say? Before we dive in here, mock drafts, you know, whether you're a baseball hitter for average, whether you're a meteorologist, or you're a mock drafter, accuracy is not necessarily a requirement for the job. And I'm not trashing any one of these. I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying it's not like these are necessarily super well informed. All you're doing is taking needs and matching historical tendencies. So let's dive in. The first one I'm going to talk about happens to come from Bleacher Report. Uh, it was just done on March 31st, and they have the Packers choosing from tight end, Univer- <clears throat> from Notre Dame tight end, Michael Mayer. The rationale here they included quotes from different sources calling Mayer a plug and play tight end. Uh, who offers a little bit of everything was the exact quote. Um, I will say, just if you happen to look up this draft from Bleacher Report, uh, Packer fans are probably going to hate this. And I'm not saying because of the mayor selection. Some of you are going to be just fine with that. It's more so what happened before and after the Packers picked. See, because at pick 16, right after the Packers go, uh, this author had Devin Witherspoon go to the Commanders. A couple picks after that, At uh, pick 18, he had Darnell Washington going to the Lions. And then at pick 23, he had Jackson Smith and Jigba going to the Minnesota Vikings. So if you happen to look that one up, it may be particularly distressing for some Packer fans who want any one of those players. But nonetheless, he chose Michael Mayer for the Packers. Moving on to ESPN, Jordan Reed just put out uh, a mock draft. Actually, I believe it was just last night. Uh, And I'm just going to cover the first four rounds here from Reed. In round one, pick 15, he has the Packers choosing Miles Murphy, the edge from Clemson. He notes that Murphy is a perfect fit for the Packers at 275 pounds. Yes, the Packers like their edge players bigger. And at 275 pounds, he has the versatility to not just rush the passer from the outside, but especially on third downs, he could kick inside. Similar to how the Packers used to use Darius Smith. So something to bear in mind, I really like the Murphy choice for Green Bay if they're going to go with Edge, as obviously does Jordan Reed. In round two, he has the Packers choosing tight end from Georgia, Darnell Washington. Packers destiny pick, it feels like. Round three, he has the Packers choosing Jaden Reed, wide receiver from Michigan State. Um, This is a name I haven't seen associated with the Packers a ton, although it's beginning to increase from what I'm seeing. And I'm really only bothered by it by one way. I mean... Reed does have some playmaking abilities, had some nice college production, but at the end of the day, last I saw, he has a 6.66 RAS score. Historically speaking, the Packers choose wide receivers with at least 8.19. So 6.66 is a pretty far drawback, and 8.19 does seem to be a pretty strict threshold for the Packers. You know, So not that it's an absolute, 
but it is one that they follow and they haven't made a ton of exceptions before except for really like Samari Toure or Amari Rogers. It's one that they pretty well follow the pattern with. So just taking note of that with Reed in round three. And kind of the same thing. Round four, he chose Jordan Battle, the safety from Alabama. Chosen one pick after that was Sidney Brown, the safety from Illinois. Now, Battle is another one who I don't believe is going to be very high on the Packers' board. His RAS score was not good, um, especially in some of the areas where the Packers really look for excellence. I have a hard time seeing that they're going to pick Battle. And to comp him to Sidney Brown, I actually see the Packers have an easier time choosing Brown. I really like Brown as the player, and his RAS score is great, well over 9. The problem with Brown is, per his combine me measurement, he came in at about 5, 9, and 3 quarters. The Packers historically like their safeties to be at least 5 foot 11. So, of course, could they make an exception? Yeah, we're talking about an inch, but to Packer GMs, to GMs everywhere, these things matter. So I like Sidney Brown a lot better. His athletic traits are a lot better too. Uh, ultimately though, at the end of the day, Jordan Reed chose Jordan Battle, Safety, Alabama. Moving on to Sports Illustrated, Bill Huber, actual Packers beat reporter, a local guy. Uh, he utilized PFN Simulator just like I did the other day. And here he's got a full seven round mock. I will say in this, he did include a Rodgers to the Jets trade, and it netted the Packers pick 42, the earlier of the Jets second round pick. So let's dive in. In round one, he said, we need to get Love some weapons. So Dalton Kincaid, Utah tight end. In round two, he chose Keon White from Georgia Tech, the edge rusher. Similar to Miles Murphy, this is a big dude with the versatility to be both outside and inside. Round two, again, this is the second round, second, second round pick, pick 45. He chose Cedric Tillman. Quick riser up a lot of draft boards, wide receiver from Tennessee, kind of a do it all your time, do it all type who Green Bay may really mesh with quite well. In round three, he chose Keanu Benton, the interior defensive lineman from Wisconsin. At six foot four, 309 pounds, this is the prototype of how Green Bay seems to like their defensive linemen. Um, you can see a match there pretty well. Round four, Wayne Morris, offensive tackle from Oklahoma. Round five, just like I did in my mock draft, he chose Anthony Johnson Jr., the safety from Iowa State. Also in round five, he chose Dorian Thompson Robinson, quarterback from UCLA, of which Huber does note that there does seem to be, after the big names this year, after the Anthony Richardsons, the CJ Shrouds, that there is a big drop off, that you've got your top tier guys, and then it drops to the next kind of class of quarterback, of which Dorian Thompson Robinson is very much a part of. We know that the Packers are probably going to be looking for a veteran to be quarterback two behind Jordan Love, and they do still have Danny Etling. My belief, as is shared with most, is that the Packers are going to be picking a quarterback somewhere in this draft. Probably later. You would think they're not going to spend anything premium on a quarterback as they transition to love. But Dorian Thompson Robinson is absolutely one of them that they could be looking at. But as Huber noted, there is a massive drop off between the top and then the next tier of quarterback. And then there are four seventh round selections. You've got Evan Hall, the running back from Northwestern. He cited his 88 catches over the last two years. Uh, Moro Ojomo. Uh, I, personally, I'm really surprised with PFN Simulator that he was still there in the seventh. As far as I'm concerned, if you're the Packers and he's there in round seven, you run that ticket up to the table and you pick this young defensive lineman who I think personally could really help the Packers. Uh, another seventh round pick, Noah Gindroff, the tight end from North Dakota State. Uh, he's a great blocker, Huber went on to explain. And then the last seventh round pick was Justin Shorter, wide receiver from Florida. So moving on to the next mock draft. Uh, I know some people call them the evil empire. I know that ESPN is not necessarily the most renowned anymore, but hey, Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, they've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, so let's hear what they have to say. And Mel Kuyper in his last mock draft, mock draft 3.0, he chose Lucas Van Ness. And he said that he considered offense here for the Packers, but at the end of the day, he cited these stats that are going to make you feel warm and fuzzy. He said that the Packers' defense still has its struggles, including finishing 28th in yards per play at 5.8 yards per play, 28th in rush defense at 5 yards per carry, and 27th in sacks with only 34. 
Mm, doesn't that make you feel good? So he decided to choose Luke Van Ness to continue to beef up the defense, especially with Rashawn Gary's ACL injury, making him kind of a question as to when he will be back, whether it's going to be in the early part of the year, mid part of the year. We'll find out. His counterpart at ESPN, you've got Todd McShay. And McShay debated different people here. He specifically said Dalton Kincaid was a consideration, but at the end of the day, Todd McShay, just like Bleacher Report, said that the pick should be Michael Mayer. Um, He did debate different weapons, but he cited Mayer's 17 contested catches, which led college football for the tight end position, to be one of the reasons that he's a bulldozer with the ball in his hands. He wanted that presence on Green Bay, so he chose Michael Mayer. Hopping over now to Pro Football Network, you've got Ian Valentino, who put out a three-round mock draft. And in round one, he chose Darnell Wright, the tackle. Says that Green Bay must upgrade blocking with love at quarterback. And, and here's my thought. I really am not opposed to the Packers choosing a tackle in round one. But his note here about Green Bay must upgrade their blocking. I think that's a bit of a misnomer. Sure, in the early part of last year, was Green Bay's offensive line deficient? Yes. Towards the end of the year, though, it certainly wasn't. By most metrics, they were one of the best pest blocking units in the league. What they needed was health and stability. Well, assuming that heading into the year, you don't necessarily have to draft a tackle in round one that is going to be an immediate starter. You still have Yash on his one-year tender. You've got Zach Tom, who's no one's quite sure where he's going to play. You've got David Bakhtiari, left tackle. And now Caleb Jones, Rasheed Walker, Luke Tenuta have all spent a year with you. So do they need an immediate plug-and-play week one starter at tackle? No, I don't think they really do. What they need is a long-term plan. As I said, Yash is only on that one-year tender. David Bakhtiari, after this year... Because they pushed money back again, his cap number gets to be darn near quarterback levels. So this very well, unless something is done, could be David Bakhtiari's last year in Green Bay. So then you start having holes on the offensive line if both Yash and Bakhtiari leave, unless you can really get some of these guys to ascend. So I don't mind choosing a tackle, but it's more so in the idea of long-term stability. And if they do, they very well might move on from Yash right away this year. But to say that Green Bay needs a massive upgrade at pass blocking? No, I mean, especially considering the PFF has them ended the year as a top three pass blocking unit. And right now I think has them ranked two. So I uh, take a little bit of exception with his reasoning, but Darnell Wright round one. Round two, he believes Michael Mayer is still just going to be chilling at pick 45. So he chose Mayer. His exact quote here is he won't be a star, but he's a solid, appropriate uh, uh I can't even read my own writing there. He won't be a star, but he's solid. There you go. And then beyond that, he also said that he's ready to start year one. Yeah, seems to be a common trend. And then in the third round, he has the Packers choosing Yaya Diaby Edge from Louisville. uh, The tools to go higher than expected. And he does fit Green Bay's thresholds. I really like Yaya Diaby. I think he's got a very high motor. I think he's got very explosive traits. He is a bit of a project who needs to diversify his pass rushing portfolio. Um... Round three, maybe. I th- I've seen him more often in rounds four or five. So still, I don't think you'd be terribly upset. Now, switching over to the NFL Network, where Bucky Brooks recently put out a mock draft. And he's made some national waves in the Twittersphere. The reason why he did is because he did not include quarterback Will Levis in his first round. Now, he rationalized that by saying that Levis uh, is falling out of the first round because of his interviews where he's coming off as arrogant or egotistical, uh, that people are kind of on to him. And the reason why he didn't have as much production is maybe people believe that he should have in college. So uh, that he made some waves. But for the Green Bay Packers, at least, round one, pick 15, he chose Miles Murphy, edge from Clemson. And his exact quote here is he has the potential to develop into a double digit sack producer. Sounds good to me. So, uh, Miles Murphy, round one, another popular choice along with Michael Mayer, it certainly seems. Next, what I'm going to talk about happens to be Walter Football. If you're familiar at all with Walter Football, they've been around for years. One of the real things that they're known for is mock drafts, really extensive ones even. So, the one that I'm quoting here is a five-round mock draft uh, where the first-round pick happened to be the second receiver off the board. That would be Quinton Johnston, wide receiver from TCU. And the rationale here was... Packers need a receiver. 
Okay, cool. Uh, second round, he went with Isaiah Foskey, citing that the Packers needed to blitz more and more throughout the year because their core pass rush wasn't getting it done. Foskey can help with that. One point of note here, just in case you were wondering, uh, Foskey went at 45, Darnell Washington happened to go at 59. So direct your anger towards Walter Football, not me. In round three, he has the Packers choosing Tucker Craft, tight end from uh, South Dakota State. Raw, but possesses quality upside. Yep, fair enough. Round four, Micah Baskerville, linebacker from LSU. He is a very quick linebacker, inside linebacker, who could help chase down the run. I'm going to get more to that in a minute. Round five, Christopher Smith, safety from Georgia. Uh, sides being competition for Savage. He does admit that Smith is undersized, especially for how Green Bay likes them. Uh, I got more on that in a minute, too. And then also round five, Josh Van, wide receiver, South Carolina. Nice potential. So look, here's the deal. Round four, Micah Baskerville. I don't see the Packers spending a top four pick on, on an inside linebacker. I just don't. You've got Devondre Campbell. You've got Quay Walker, who you just spent a first-round pick on last year. So who is when is this rookie going to see the field exactly? Because you're probably not taking off Devondre Campbell or Quay in first and second down. And plus, they've got Isaiah McDuffie as their number three inside linebacker, who by all accounts, they seem to really like. And then at four, you've got Eric Wilson, who has legit starting experience that a lot of people forget about at inside linebacker. He's not just a special teamer. So to make this pick means that the Packers would be carrying, in all likelihood, five inside linebackers, which is possible, sure. I just I just don't see the fit when you've got Quay Walker and Devondre Campbell to spend a top four pick one of your more premium picks, maybe a day three, like, flyer on a special team, or sure. But when you're looking in the first four rounds, you're still talking a relatively premium pick that you're probably looking to fill a need with, or at least some gap on the roster. We know that the Packers do have quite a few bodies to fill in. So I just I just don't see it here. And then, yes, in the fifth round, Christopher Smith, safety from Georgia. Uh, Walter Football does admit that he's probably undersized. I agree, but pair that with a very low RAS score, and I just don't see there being any way that Smith is on the Packers' board unless they're willing to make some exceptions. So moving on from Walter Football, next we have USA Today, who, sticking with the theme at pick 15, chose Michael Mayer. Here's the quote. Equipping a little-used QB... With an underdeveloped and erratic receiving core should be cause for concern. Well, dang, USA Today. So, uh, choosing Michael Mayer, obviously the belief here is that that would help solidify the pass-catching unit for Jordan Love. Um, I can't really argue. I know not everyone loves it, but I can't really argue with choosing Mayer. Seems to be obviously a consensus. But dang, to call Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs underdeveloped, my goodness. So let's move on to PFF, where Gordon McGinnis put out a three-round mock draft, which just happened to feature the Packers heavily because he included that there would be a trade for Aaron Rodgers for both of the Jets' second-round picks, picks 42 and 43. So in round one, he chose Dalton Kincaid, tight end from Utah. Round two, the first of the two picks, Will McDonald, the fourth, uh, edge, and look, I really like this pick. I like Will McDonald a lot. I think that the Packers' edge space could use a guy like Will McDonald, uh, someone who's quicker, someone who's bendier. But the problem is he's pretty far away from the Packers' traditional threshold of 265 pounds for an edge rusher. We do know, too, that the Packers brought in McDonald for a visit. So might they be willing to make an exception here? Maybe. Because he does have exceptional traits that could dictate making an exception, or the Packers are just looking to diversify that room and get away from the historical precedents. So, Will McDonald in the second. Also in the second would be Mazzy Smith, the interior defensive lineman from Michigan. Really like that pick. Next in the second, Nathaniel Dell, wide receiver from Houston. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And then on the third, Tanner McKee, quarterback from Stanford. Look, Nathaniel Dell, pick 45 in the second round. Uh... <sighs> The scouting report on him from PFF is that he's a human joystick. Good, good. I bet that would be a lot of fun. But here's the issue. Nathaniel Dell is 5'8 and 165 pounds. This is a little man. And I just don't see the Green Bay Packers, again, like I said, with Will McDonald, there probably are such good traits there that the Packers may be willing to step outside of their threshold so that they can ascertain those higher traits in the form of McDonald while diversifying the room. Nathaniel Dell is a little, little man. And I just, 
I'm not sure that his game ascends to the level of doing things that others can't do that the Packers are willing to make such an exception. Like, that's not just an exception. They're going way under their thresholds. Generally, to give you an idea, they like their wide receivers to be like 190, 195 pounds. Ideally, over two. 165 is a massive departure. So, would a human joystick be a fun addition to the offense just as a weapon? Sure. But I'm just cautioning that that's a pretty big departure from their norm. So I just, I have difficulty seeing it. And then here you got Tanner McKee, one of the top quarterbacks of that second level I was talking about earlier. But still, uh, to spend a third round pick on a quarterback may be pushing it. So let's move on to the next one, Packers Wire, Brennan Rupp. If you don't know Brennan Rupp, go find him on Twitter. Uh, To me, he's one of the better uh, draft analysts, all Packers. Uh, He does profiles for Packers Wire about different players all the time. Uh, I certainly respect his opinion. The only place where he and I really differ on a lot of things is he seems to be willing to go outside of the Packers historical thresholds a little bit more than I am. I'm a little bit stricter to them, but still, I really respect his scouting reports. Seems to do a, a really great job kind of summing up how players would fit with the Packers and what their college production was. So here he puts out a mock draft, three round mock. He put this out just earlier today. And same thing, he includes a trade for Rodgers for 42 and 43 from the Jets. So pick 15, he chooses Brian Breezy, defensive lineman from Clemson. 42, Isaiah Foskey, edge from Notre Dame. 43, Tucker Kraft, tight end from South Dakota State. 45, Anton Harrison, tackle from Oklahoma. And 78, Jaden Reed, wide receiver from Michigan State. So again, kind of going outside of those RAS principles for Reed, just like earlier. Um, okay, moving on to the next one, draft wire, first round pick, Nolan Smith, edge from Georgia, very much in that Will McDonald mold for me. Like you want to go get Nolan Smith? Great. I think he'd be a welcome addition to the edge room, but just know that he's outside of their norm. Second round pick, JL Skinner, safety, Boise State. I know a few of you are going to be thrilled about JL Skinner. And then in the third, Joe Tipman, interior offensive lineman from Wisconsin. One quick note about JL Skinner is I'm very, very eagerly awaiting his athletic profile. I don't think he's ruled out for the Packers. I, it's just we don't have very much info there yet. Very, very excited to see how that rounds out for Skinner and think about how he could fit in with the Packers. I'm just not sure it's there yet. So, all told, we got five tight ends, most of them being Mayer, an offensive tackle. This is just round one. Four edges, one wide receiver, one DL across this 12 mock drafts. One quick thing about mock drafts that I just want you to keep in mind. I touched on it earlier, but look, we don't know anything. (laughs) No one does. (laughs) Right, You may love a certain player and then be really angry when the Green Bay Packers don't pick him. But look, we just don't know. We just don't. Because all we do in creating a mock draft is look at a player's production and their profile. And then we try to match that up with team needs and historical precedents. But... We don't know so much. We've never met these men. We don't know how they speak. We don't know if in an interview, one prospect sat down and said, Brian Gutekunst, your wife is ugly. I don't think the Packers would pick him. But all I'm saying is we don't know. Mock drafts are entertainment. They're not necessarily reporting. What they do is they analyze team needs, which is an element of reporting. They associate ranges where players may fall. But at the end of the day... All of this is outside of our control, and we just don't know. So take it for what it is, and enjoy the matchmaking that occurs. But don't look at it like it's factual reporting, because we know it's lying season. And this is just how the draft goes, which is why it's fun. Hope you have a great day today. Hope you didn't have to redo anything today. Hope you've had a very, very productive day. Like I said, I may not be in on Wednesday. I got a bunch of stuff in the middle of the week for sure. I will be back on Friday at the latest. So hope you have a wonderful day today. And as always, Go Pack Go.